Now moving on to the DTRs, the deep tendon reflex. So reflexes is just stimulus response by activity, basically like tapping on a tendon, which initiates a response, right? So remember, tendons will cause a response along the afferent nerve to CNS, that central nervous system. Now moving on to deep tendon reflexes, the DTRs. So remember, reflexes are a stimulus response of activity when hitting a sensory receptor. We're basically just tapping a tendon as you do at a doctor's office, right? Like hitting the knee and we get that response. So the tendon will cause a response along the afferent nerve in the CNS and then the efferent nerve is going to cause a muscle contraction. Now it does not travel to the brain, only to the spinal cord here. So if you can demonstrate for us real quick. Absolutely, so we have a few different ones. We have three in the upper and two in the lower extremities. Okay. So for the upper extremity, you wanna always make sure that your patient is fully relaxed. Because again, this is gonna be one of those reflexive, kind of primitive in nature, not going all the way up to the brain for us to think about. So we have the brachioradialis reflex first. And so this one, if you find the wrist bone, you're gonna go about three to five centimeters above the wrist bone and you're just gonna lightly tap. Very good, and you're gonna see just a slight almost pronation of the forearms, so just a slight move in with that reflex. And it's not as exciting as you would think, you're just looking for almost like a little bit of a twitch. Okay. Nursing school is hard work. SimpleNursing.com makes it simple. We take your classroom lectures and notes to create a handcrafted study plan with specialized videos and visual study guides that highlight only the top tested need to know key points, coupled with thousands of practice questions to test your knowledge, all neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free today. Visit simplenursing.com. Then the next one, and so you want to make sure the patient is relaxed as possible, because if they are stiffening up at all or if they're even focusing on it too much, sometimes that can cause the reflex to not occur. So we can even sometimes do what's called reinforcement, give them some type of distraction item. Like we could give him a clicking pin on the other side of, of his hand, because mm -hmm. then by distracting him, make him use that hand, he'll relax this part. So go ahead and relax, give me all that weight. <laughs> So for the brachial one, you're finding that brachial or that biceps tendon right here. This is the only one you wanna do indirect. You don't wanna directly hit it because this tendon is actually pretty easy to find. It's that rope-like one in your antecubital. Oh, so I'm gonna yeah. cover it with my thumb and I'm gonna hit my own thumb. Very good, and so you see that little flick so that eliciting that tendon response cause a contraction of the bicep. So you have a little bit of a flexion of the forearm that occurs. Now is the location commonly tested? This, it can commonly be ones that have to, you have to do for return demonstrations in nursing school okay. or can be asked about as far as the location. So next one is the tricep tendon. Okay. So you're going to want to make the patient do this sort of scarecrow position mm -hmm. where you're holding their arm and you want to find that tricep insertion point because you really want to get the tendon at the point where it's going to elicit a response. It's not too big and it's not too little. So going about one to two inches above the olecranon process, the elbow, you find a little dip and you can find that tendon insertion site. So ah. their tendon insertion site's about right here. So I'm going to hit, oh. and you will see a contraction of that tricep causing that slight extension that you saw of the forearm. Again, though, it's not as exciting as what you <laughs> sometimes would hope for, yeah. but so tendons in that deep tendon reflexes, we grade them just like pulses. Okay. A normal pulse finding is two plus. So just like pulses, we grade on the zero to four scale, and just like pulses, a normal finding would be two plus. If they had decreased pulses, that would be one plus. If it was absent, it would be zero. Mm. If they had increased or hyperreactive reflexes, then it would be three plus or four plus. And we can see that sometimes with like patients with preeclampsia, mm -hmm. we get concerned if they have those hyperactive reflexes. And oftentimes that's where the patients that we're putting on like magnesium drips yes. to relax. Um, and so oftentimes even that can be titrated based on the reflex reaction. So really reflexes are mainly used a lot of times with um, pregnant clients as well as you know pediatric clients to see if their reflexes are developing as we would expect. Or even electrolyte imbalances, right? So. Absolutely. The big one is magnesium. Everyone always gets something wrong. So remember the memory trick, magnesium mellows the body. So too much magnesium, we get too much mellow, right? So we're gonna get decreased DTRs. And then too little magnesium, we get wild and crazy DTRs, right? So 
hyperreflexia. And so now next we're gonna talk about the two lower extremity reflexes. All right. We have the patella and we have the Achilles. So for the patellar ones, and this is all as far as how you hold your reflex hammer, this is commonly asked by my students. Uh, one, you wanna make sure that you have kind of a light grip on it, not too, you don't wanna be holding it so firm that you're injuring your patient anyway. And then also as far as which end of the reflex hammer you utilize, it all depends on how big is that tendon insertion site. And sometimes it can even be personal preference. So for me, I usually like to use the flatter end on the lower extremity, uh, oftentimes just because they're bigger tendons. With the smaller end, I like to use that for some of the smaller tendon insertion sites. So for the patella, you're gonna go just below the patella on the knee. And a big point to this is, like we did before with the upper extremities, you always want the client to be hanging loose and relaxed. So you would not wanna have your client's feet be on the floor. Okay. If their feet are on the floor, then they actually tighten up their quads. Oh. Some people actually call this, they call it the patellar, or they also call it the quadricept reflex. Because what will happen when illicit is, it shortens that quadricep, that thigh muscle. And when it shortens that, it causes an extension of the lower leg. So we'll go ahead and show. So I'm gonna find kind of right below that patella. Hit. Oh no, nothing happened. Hmm. Wait, let's try reinforcement. So now we're gonna have our patient do reinforcement and pull with the upper body. This is gonna cause the patient to relax the lower body and we're gonna be more likely to get that reflex response. Okay. So I'm gonna go hit. Oh, okay. Very good. So that would be a two plus from the lower extremity. And usually when charting, we would just want to note that reinforcement needed to be utilized. Now for the Achilles reflex. I assume this is on the Achilles tendon. Yes. Okay. So how do we assess this one? So this one, you're going to go right where, essentially, if he were wearing sneakers, where the top of the sneaker would be. Mm -hmm. So a little bit higher than where his sock line ends. Oh, okay. And again, you want the patient to be relaxed. And this is going to cause, when you hit that tendon, it's gonna cause a shortening of that muscle. And so you'll see a plantar flexion of the foot. Okay. Very good. So it's almost, again, just like a little twitch. And so that would be two plus. And if needed, you can always use reinforcement either giving a click pen or having the patient pull their arms apart to help them with relaxation. Gotcha, we wanna distract them if we can't get it.